Hello, hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to Cozy Science, where science feels as comforting as your favorite blanket on a chilly evening. Today is Monday, and today we have episode 72 of our um, daily segment Cozy Science, where we present you one or sometimes a couple of articles connected to the same area. And today we're diving into a topic that is as vast and interconnected as the world we live in, our changing environment. Have you ever wondered how the small things like a spider in the forest or the layout of our cities can have a huge impact on our lives? Well, today we're going to explore how climate change is affecting everything from our power grids to new species of tarantulas, and what that means for our future. But before we go to a little intro, it is your time to get your cup of coffee and uh, snuggle up and be ready for our first articles. So once again, I would love to mention that it is already episode 73. So and let's start with something that might surprise you. A tiny tarantula that has scientists asking big questions about our planet's future. Recently, researchers discovered a new species of tarantula. But there is a catch. This little guy might be one of the first to go extinct due to climate change. Found in a very specific habitat, this tarantula relies on a delicate balance of temperature and humidity to survive. But with our climate shifting so rapidly, the small patch of land it calls home could soon become uninhabitable. It's a stark reminder that even the smallest creatures are deeply connected to the health of our planet. And the question here isn't just about saving one species, but about understanding the ripple effects of climate change on ecosystems everywhere. And now, from the tiny to the massive, let's switch gears or gears and talk about something that affects millions of people every day, our power supply, with article number two. Extreme weather events are becoming more common, and with them comes the threat of widespread power out outages. But what if we could share the risk across different regions to prevent these blackouts? Researchers from Stanford University have been studying how interconnected power grids can distribute the load and reduce the chances of outages during extreme weather. Think of it like a group of friends sharing the cost of a big dinner. When everyone chips in, the burden on any one person is lighter. This idea of risk sharing could be the key to keeping our lights on as the climate continues to challenge our infrastructures. And while we're talking about the impacts of climate change, let's touch on something many of us worry about, rising sea levels. With study number three, there is good news and bad news on this front connected with the sea level. A recent study found that the highest predictions of sea level rise might be unlikely. While this might sound like a relief, it doesn't mean we are in the clear. Sea levels are still rising, just not as dramatically as some models predicted. The important takeaways, well, we still need to act to protect vulnerable coastal communities and ecosystems. But there is a bit more time to make those changes than we previously thought. And now, let's move from the oceans to our cities and talk about how the very design of our urban areas could be making flooding actually worse. With article number 4, Urban Street Networks and Flood Severity. 
Did you know that the way our streets are laid out and how densely our cities are built can actually make floods more severe? Researchers from UC Arvin found that certain streets patterns and buildings densities can trap water, leading to worse flooding during heavy rains. It's like trying to pour water down a drain that is partially blocked. The more obstacles in the way, the more the water backs up. And this research suggests that urban planning needs to adapt to our changing climate to prevent future disasters. So, urban planners, it's your time to shine and actually um, do things not only beautiful, but also, um, also practical. Now, speaking of cities, pollution is another big issue many of us face. But what happens when only the weatherly or only the wealthy can afford to escape it with article number 5, pollution and economic disparities. A study out of Lancaster University revealed that while pollution is driving families to relocate to healthier areas, it's mostly the wealthy who can afford to make the move. And this creates a huge divide where those with fewer resources are left in more polluted, less healthy environments. It is a sobering reminder that climate change and environmental degradation often hit the most vulnerable the hardest, unfortunately, of course. So, think about it, um, dear, um, dear uh, people who work in the government. So, what is being done to tackle these big challenges? Let's talk about climate policies, which... Um, which is or which are being presented in the study number six, evaluating climate policy effectiveness. So, for the past two decades, scientists have been evaluating which climate policies work best. This groundbreaking study from the Post, uh, Potsdam Institute found that policies promoting renewable energy and energy efficiency have been the most successful in reducing carbon emissions. However, they also found that more aggressive actions are needed to meet global climate goals. This tells us that while we are on the right path, there is still a long way to go. And finally, let's touch on a new approach to environmental decision-making that puts human rights at the uh, right center. With the last study number 7. Scientists are calling for an update in how we make environmental decisions, suggesting that human rights should be the key factor. Or a key factor, if you'd like. This approach would ensure that actions taken to protect the environment also protect the rights and well-being of people, especially those in vulnerable communities. It is about recognizing that the environment and human rights are deeply intertwined, and that protecting one should never come at the expense of the other. And yet, you might ask, well, why does this research matter? Well, because they show us climate change that isn't just a scientific issue. It is a human issue. From tiny tarantulas to entire cities. Our actions today will shape the world we live in tomorrow. And understanding these connections is the first step in making informed decisions that benefit both the planet and the people on it. And here is something to think about. How do you see climate change impacting your personal daily life? And what small changes can you make to contribute to a healthier planet? Let's Share your thoughts and join the conversation. We would love to hear your ideas. And I would answer too. So, how do you see climate change impacting your daily life? Well, first of all, it depends on where I live. And I suppose that um, climate change, the reducing or the reduction or the um, demissioning of uh, um, water might be a huge problem, as well as the use of electricity and the black house because probably not probably um, for sure as i'm working online mainly i need a lot of electricity and a lot of water and of course coffee a lot of coffee and the climate change might also impact my uh, coffee drinking routines 
And what about small changes that I can personally make to contribute to a healthier planet? Well, I believe the first thing to do is recycling. Recycling, recycling is the most important thing, first of all. Secondly, economizing of energy, of course, not to overcharge or constantly charge your mobile phones and so on and so forth. And perhaps in the nearest or in the distant future, I believe that I would start using the solar panels, which also will contribute to a healthier planet. And what about yourself? Let's discuss it. And of course, so next time you're thinking about your impact on the environment, remember that even small changes like conserving energy or supporting green policies can add up to make a big difference. And before we wrap up, let's take a quick trip back in time with On This Day segment. So, in 1965, the streamlined telephone, which made dialing more convenient, was made available to the public. And in 1938, the first nylon bristle toothbrush hit the market, changing the way we care for our teeth. And these innovations remind us how technology evolves to meet our needs, just as we must evolve our approach to tackle climate change. And otherwise, that's it for today's episode of Cozy Science. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of how our world is changing and what we can do about it. Otherwise, as always, stay curious, stay updated, stay informed, and stay cozy. I can't wait to share more fascinating science with you next time. Otherwise, have a good Monday as well.